Subacromial Impingement Etiology The rotator cuff works as a depressor and centralizer of the humeral head and the glenohumeral joint. As the arm is abducted and elevated, the rotator cuff depresses the humeral head, allowing it to glide easily underneath the acromion. Should any abnormality occur affecting the rotator cuff, this would lead to dysfunction of the cuff. Therefore, as the arm is elevated and abducted, the depressing and centralising effect would be lost and the humeral head would ride upwards closer to the acromion at risk of causing impingement. Pathologies that could do this are those directly affect the rotator cuff, such as rotator cuff strain, partial or full thickness tears, calcific tendinitis, a tendinopathy due to chronic overuse and indirect causes such as glenohumeral instability, labral tears, in particular slap tears, and abnormal muscle patterning problems of the shoulder. The acromion differs in individuals normally as morphological variants. These were described by Bigliani as type 1, type 2, or type 3. Type 1 is flat, type 2 is curved, and type 3 is hooked. A person with type 2 or type 3 acromion would be at a higher risk of impingement due to the narrowing of the acromiohumeral space. In addition, with advancing age, people tend to develop spurs at the front and side of the acromion. This further reduces the subacromial space, increasing the risk of impingement. Therefore, somebody with a rotator cuff injury who has a type 3 acromion and is in their 50s has a very high risk of developing significant impingement compared to a patient in their 20s sustaining a supraspinatus strain who may have a type 1 acromion and no spurs.